VHS Cult. It's been a decade since we did the podcast again. On Monday, you got in a fight with a dog. Yeah, I got attacked and that by like a dog. So long ago, but that was just Monday. Well, it's also, I mean, again, it's one of those days, one of those weeks where you didn't really write until Friday. And so yeah. you didn't see me until Friday. Yeah. And That's then what it, it seems is. like if we don't write, it just seems like I don't do anything. But like, worked on my car this week, cleaned out my closet, you know, did a bunch of stuff and like edited the podcast, did some. Writing on my own, working on editing another podcast. Yeah, so like I did shit. It's just like that was all this week, huh? So I got I went on a walk with my dog, and we got attacked by another dog that was loose. And I got some stitches, and then uh, but let's see, my car battery sort of died. <laughs> I just had a shitty week, mm-hmm. like a real fucking shitty week. Yeah, to beat up a dog. <laughs> yeah, I beat him up real good. He he showed I showed him what's for. Did you give him the people's elbow? <laughs> there wasn't time. I guess I think that's what it I was would, real quick and dirty. That's what I would do though. Is just the, like, the people's elbow. Well, no, just like flop on top of. <laughs> well, that's them, basically you know, what I did, and then grab him around the neck. He's like, "Choke you out, dog! I'm choke you out! I got you in the headlock!" Oh, he, oh he's giving him the DDT. Oh, he's noogieing him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I realized uh, I should have talked about this last week, but for some reason I forgot about it. Uh, final word on Death Stranding. It's a masterpiece. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. It's a masterpiece. And I don't want to hear any criticisms from anyone else. Um, I'm going to go with the standard phrasing. If you didn't like Death Stranding, you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get it. I haven't played it yet, so I can't comment. <laughs> you didn't get it. Um, well, remember I said one of the things I liked about Kojima was um, the His emphasis hair. on like gameplay and playing with gameplay as a way to reinforce the narrative or the world Mm -hmm. you know basically a cohesive nature to it being a video game and also being a compelling narrative and basically all the like trials and tribulations of the early game like getting used to the controls and like how clumsy norman reedus is or sam rather and uh, really being on your own and tripping over rocks and blah, blah blah you move into the game eventually uh the game like opens up because you're able to build roads and there's other you it's yeah ever, other people are sharing the experience so you're helping to build roads that you can later use and it makes the motorcycle more effective and blah 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 and all that collapses back into what the game is about which is social connections for the benefit of everyone and Norman Reedus's character's personal arc is him going from voluntarily being an outcast to making connections with people to have a better life and to serve the world in the best way he can. So I don't know. It's just like some cool shit that only Kojima could do. <laughs> well, not could do is the only one who's willing to do. And I've mentioned this before to you off the podcast that uh, people, are, well, it's just a walking simulator. And it's like, well, most of the games you play are shooting. So sim- they're like a shooting rage simulator. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
You just go into little arenas and shoot shit. You can boil everything down to its simplest components. On top of those games just being a shooting rage simulator. And their fucking stories are god awful. stories either god awful or they just stole them from movies that already exist. Basically, fuck video games. Kojima's the only one out there doing real shit. If you identify as a gamer, it's time to give up. <laughs> And you haven't seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yet, huh? No, nah, I haven't seen that either. It's um on the internet. <laughs> I, check that. Uh, I have a hot take about it that I'll wait to talk to you about because because I have to see it first. Yeah, is it fuck Bruce Lee? Um, no, I I don't particularly. Care I don't care about that part of it, about yeah. the Bruce Lee thing. I know everyone's like, well, they made him look like a fool. So sometimes Bruce Lee did say some dumb shit. Uh, just before we started this podcast, we were talking about the Mandalorian. Baby Yoda? Yeah, and I think That's what everybody's talking about is Baby Yoda. Yeah, Baby Yoda slash the Mandalorian slash Werner Herzog talking about the Mandalorian. Single-handedly saved Star Wars for me. I'm all on board now, Disney. <laughs> Until the rise of the Skywalkers yeah, comes <laughs> out. <laughs> Stomp those boots all over me. I love this Star Wars shit. Uh, do you think the rise of Skywalker is going to be bad? I don't know. I think it'll be. Man, I'm like I don't know. I like I'm. I, I wasn't impressed with the Force Awakens or the Last Jedi that that much. You know what yeah. I mean? They're both okay. I think, either I think it'll be bad. okay. Yeah, the, uh, to me now in my old cynical age, or I mean, since I the last like 15 years of my life, Star Wars, it's really easy to watch and be like, yeah, this is a pretty good toy commercial. You know what I mean? But that's kind of all they are. I don't. I hate how the Last Jedi has become a left versus right issue somehow on the quality of the film. Yeah, it makes me feel like I it's can't just, critique it at all. Yeah, it was honestly just not a very good movie. And I don't have a problem with Ryan Johnson. I think Ryan Johnson's a good director. I'm actually looking forward to him doing uh, his own Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, it's Night, just like Knives like, Out is supposedly really good, which I'm not shocked by. But um, it looked good. I haven't seen it yet. Though. I don't know what the storytelling narrative elements th- that are in the film that politicizes it one way or the other there's the one scene where they go to canto bite and they make fun of oh, rich people e- rich people are evil yeah. yeah but that's so banal <laughs> yeah and like kind of hypocritical because it's in disney's star wars you know what i mean it's, i don't th- there's no substance to that political point coming from star wars so i, don't I think it's honestly like the rose finn shit oh. isn't it I don't know what it is. I don't. I haven't gotten into it enough to understand. All I know is it's completely. Or is it the Ray? Or is it people are upset about Ray? A lot of people. Yeah, there's obviously the men's rights and men going their own way and incels on the internet don't like Ray because oh she's Mary Sue, but fucking she's just a Star Wars character. They're all like super flat and one dimensional, and she's fine. Except for Chewie, he's absolutely fine. Daisy Ridley is perfectly fine for what Star Wars takes. <laughs> That's the thing is, Star Wars, uh, none of them are that good. Uh, the original trilogy was groundbreaking for technical film. And honestly, the score is really amazing. But they're not great films. And How, dare you? How dare you? Tropey archetypal characters. There's not any depth to them. <laughs> Oh, Han Solo is a criminal, but he's also... He's got a heart of gold. <laughs> not a heart of gold. Wow, man, I've never seen that before. And then The Force Awakens, apparently none of that mattered, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's my largest issue with the uh, the new trilogy, is it's just like, they, they saved the galaxy, and then they fucked up. <laughs> well, it's just all nostalgia bait, like our podcast. It's Hauntology, yeah. which we talked about before, where, remember this? Captain Walker. Captain Walker's wife. Yeah. I guess that's just how mythology works, but it's so weird that our modern mythology is uh, a <laughs> capitalist products. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ee. I'll say it. Alan Moore was right. Superhero shit is dumb. <laughs> I don't know. He, again, I think I said this on Twitter. It's like a super weird take from a guy that really has never grown up. Like he's not an adult. And by anybody's uh, understanding of the definition of an adult. Alan Moore? Yeah, and he's like calling people Peter Pans for or uh, little boys for liking superhero movies. I think it's really weird for him to come from him. Um, I think it's... Uh, pretty Again, I think it's really... Hit. I, I think everybody looking at movies and, and superhero movies in general are um, are getting very mad at a symptom of a larger problem oh, yeah. in society. And and then that's my problem with Alan Moore is like, oh, I'm, I'm so smart. Look at me diagnose these symptoms. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually, now that you point that out, that's basically my stance on it, because I don't think he's wrong. I just, he was 
really aggressive and like directional about it. Yeah. And like, yeah, he didn't get to the root of it. Cause there is a problem where there's like a rest of development for our entire generation and even generation, the generation above us. And that sort of thing where people aren't growing and expanding or introducing new ideas or anything, but that's because of, capitalism <laughs> to be honest right it's just yeah it's a stagnation of a, of a largely it's a stagnation of our culture culture and economy, and economy. Yeah. yeah whatever oh well um we watched once upon then we watched once upon a time in hollywood we watched coming to america we watched once upon a time in the west Andy Murphy. Yeah, we watched Fuck coming, you! To, coming to america we uh didn't mention it on the last yeah podcast. we didn't but it's a surprise surprise we watched coming to america i like them all even pluto mash it's an extremely pampered African prince travels to Queens, New York, and goes undercover to find a wife that he can reject respect for her intelligence. Reject. <laughs> I like getting the IMDb synopsis for these movies because they're always the, the most blindest shit. <laughs> I guess that one's basically what it yeah, is. Yeah, it's kind of right. Yeah. They're making a coming to America too. You know that, right? Yeah, it's coming the number two to America. America. What could it be about? Isn't it about Akeem finding going in search for his son or some shit? Oh, that'd be good because then. Um, Eddie Murphy and Sherry Headley will have to barely appear in it. <laughs> Except for I'm I'm back on the Eddie Murphy train. Me too, after, after seeing uh, My Name is Dolomite. Yeah. Or call me up. What's the hell's the name of this? My Name is Dolomite. My Name is Dolomite. Yeah, I'm back on the Eddie Murphy train. He's me too. Brilliant, man. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> just don't watch Raw. <laughs> or just put cut parts Or Delirious. Yeah, I wish parts you probably. Uh, he's actually. He's apologized for it. Yeah, he has. Which is, I mean, that's kind of all these fools have to do. Well, I mean, apologize for it and then change. Well, legitimately yeah. apologize, yeah, and then move away from it. Uh, these fools are just like, ah, oh, whatever. I don't actually care about gay people. You f word. It's like what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The cynical side of me is like, well, that's Eddie Murphy being smart businessman that he is, but it's, I guess. But I mean, I don't feel like he doesn't need to be. Now nah, he does not at this point, right? There's a quote from uh, Eddie Murphy. I don't remember exactly what it is, but he's like. Yeah, I think I'll probably, like, stop making movies after my 30s. I just want to, like, retire and be, like, a man of leisure. That's kind of what he did. <laughs> he did you see his... Um, movies, yeah, he did. Pluto Nash. Um, <laughs> did you see his um, Communities and Cars with Jerry Seinfeld? No, I don't I don't like Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, it's okay. It's, um, I was just pointing out because that was basically my impression of Eddie Murphy. He's like, I haven't done shit <laughs> in the last 20 years. Man, he made Harlem Nights, so... Good enough, man. It is kind of hard to watch it now because of the homophobic language. But Raw and Delirious are both still really funny. He did, you know what? Yeah. I'm Eddie Murphy. Tra- Eddie Murphy <laughs> the best, greatest living comedian. Film comedian. I'm sorry, Bill Murray. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I mean, that's really only between those two, right? Someone's going to say Will Ferrell, but they're wrong. Um, yeah, Will Ferrell's just doesn't quite have it. I like Will Ferrell a lot, but he's not for like Steve Martin, maybe. But he doesn't mm, have the like, he doesn't have the length, the yeah. breadth of work that either Eddie Murphy or yeah. Bill Murray do, or did. like the highest highs that they have. Yeah, because Steve Martin's not in Ghostbusters. <laughs> Steve Martin didn't make Harlem Nights. It'd be weird if he did. <laughs> I want to see Steve Martin's Harlem Nights. It's <laughs> Steve Martin, Marlon Martin Short in the Richard Pryor role. <laughs> do you know uh, Ed, Eddie Murphy's full name is Edward Reagan Murphy? Nope. We're That's a really people. Irish name. Yeah, so is it, um, you know, since the Irish came to the United States and lived in the same communities as uh, black people, or is it the unfortunate consequence of slavery? Well, there's a couple, like it depends on what which version of history you read, right? Some it's because they, they well, lived in the same neighborhood. The time period. Yeah, right? And some it depends on the time period, like where... If they lived in the neighborhood with with Irish people, right? Mm-hmm. Also, some slaveholders gave their slaves Irish names because the Irish are shit. Oh, really? Yeah. Like as a prank? Well, yeah, because you got I feel like in census you have to give your slaves names, from my understanding, and depending on what year the census we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I, my understanding is, in some cases, they just gave them shitty names or names of people that they don't really like. Man, America is so weird. We have such a terrible history. I, mean, I guess like. Western Europe in through America. The human history is it's fucking bad. awful. Like I don't give a shit if it's Chinese history or, or Indian history or African history or uh the history of the Western world. We're shitty to each other. Yeah, I guess it's just the most recent atrocities have been the Yeah, I mean like the Western the problem is like the Western world has been able to perpetuate their atrocities very far. Yeah. 
But I mean, like, uh, you know, the fucking Mongols, uh, they uh, definitely perpetuated some atrocities during their conquests. Yeah, they were terrible. Which is true of, like, almost any conquering army in history. Mm-hmm, but not... Mm, who are the good guys in history? Hmm. Soviets! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I know the... <laughs> Strong bureaucratic Germans, right? They didn't ever do anything bad. <laughs> we Germans, not a warlike people. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the trademarks that uh, Eddie Murphy has, according to IMDb. Are you ready? Yep. His goofy laugh, his mustache, um, a big smile, and yeah. he's boundlessly energetic. I guess he, Eddie Murphy's got a lot of energy on screen, you yeah. uh, The big one, though, is often plays multiple characters in one movie. You know what film that started with? Coming to America? Coming to America. <laughs> and you know what inspired him to do it? No. Peter Sellers in Doctor Strange. Ah, there you go. Yeah, which is yeah, that's, that's a good choice. <laughs> uh, him and, Ars- and Arsenio do it in Coming to America. Uh, I think, the, obviously, the one everybody thinks about in this movie is the Barbershop Guys. Yeah, Barbershop Guys. Especially Eddie Murphy as a Jewish man. The old Jewish Where dude. it's like... Damn, that's really good makeup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rick Baker. Rick Baker's great at practical effects. So makeup's amazing. And then also, um, the other characters Eddie Murphy does in the movie still kind of sound like Eddie Murphy. The Jewish guy does not. He sounds like old Jewish. He sounds like old Jewish. <laughs> this film, directed by John Landis. <laughs> so we'll need you, uh, you may be familiar from him uh, from uh, Twilight Zone movie fame. Let's talk and uh, also perhaps some sexual assaults. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he was got wrapped up recently in some of that shit. Oh, are oh, you sure it was him and not his son? It could have been Max. I might be I might be confusing my Landis. I think it was Max, Max Landis has been accused of like aggressive sexual behavior and stuff. Didn't uh, Eddie get, reach out to John Landis to do this movie because of like the shit that had happened with John Landis and like, the Twilight Zone? Like, felt sorry for him? Or? Well, yeah, we're going to talk about All that. All right, let's real do it. Quick. John Landis, uh, he used to be known as... The Mandis with the Plandis. <laughs> That's then a stupid name. One day, one of his Plandises is, it, it went astray. <laughs> killed a very famous actor. <laughs> killed a couple big, kids. Dick Morrow and two children. His early career, uh, he was working as a stuntman in spaghetti westerns. Did you know that? No. Yeah. He specialized in falling off horses. <laughs> Which I'm, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, he's good friends. What do you do for a living, uh, John? Oh, I do pratfalls off uh, horses for movies. And then they do <laughs> fart sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, good friend with Don Sutherland. He uh, even babysat Kiefer. <laughs> that explains everything. And he's like, I'm going to model my character in Lost Boys off of John Landis. <laughs> uh, let's talk about a, the string of hits he had. So he does the Kentucky Fried movie. He directs Animal House, then he directs the Blues Brothers, then his masterpiece, American Werewolf in London, and Trading Places with Eddie Murphy. Mm -hmm. So, man, shit's going good for John Landis. What could go wrong? Well, let me tell you. Well, try this on the movie. Uh, Criminal negligence all over the place on this set. So, the children, uh, according to Actors Guild rules, aren't allowed to work at night. So uh, he hired two children that were not in the Actors Guild, did not tell them about it, told the parents there wouldn't be any explosions or helicopters, to, uh, hid the children from like safety inspectors and the fire chief, and uh, just was like, all right, go out there, um, we might lose the helicopter. <laughs> and so they go out there, Vic Morrow is supposed to be carrying the two children, and there's going to be a helicopter flying low chasing behind them. And there's going to be explosions going off. And so they film one exactly scene. Exactly what you need little kids for. And they film one scene. And all right, no problem, no problem. Uh, then they have to reposition the helicopter for the next scene. And as they go to start filming it, the helicopter is not quite in position. But they let off the explosions anyways. And it knocks the tail rotor off the helicopter. And they lose control of the helicopter. And it crashes into the three actors, decapitating Vic Morrow and one of the kids, and crushing it at the other kids. John Landis had to go to trial for several years about this. The trial lasted a long time. There was a criminal and civil case. Uh, did not get criminal manslaughter. Probably 
I feel like they definitely should have. Criminal negligence, at least, because if you read about it, it's just a bunch of people that were like, fuck it, who cares? No, we don't need rules. Rules are for fucking baby we're people. We're here making art. It's <laughs> the Twilight Zone yeah. movie. <laughs> ah, no rules. I do think, so I am like, yeah, art, fucking art for art's sake, just do the art. But, um, I don't know. Like, at some point, you gotta. That's if, like, it's you. You know what I mean? Like, I can't put someone else's life on my yeah, brush. Yeah, also, making Twilight Zone movie. Like, fucking. I don't think. I don't know if there's a single movie ever made that's worth people dying for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe Mad Max uh, Fury Road. <laughs> oh, uh, someone actually did. Did someone die? I think yeah. so. Yeah, you fucker. I feel bad about that joke now. Uh, yeah, so after Twilight Zone, he does still manage to direct the Thriller music video. So that's a pretty cool team up, right? Yeah. Michael Jackson and John Landis. It's, uh, and then after that, he does Into the Night, Spies Like Us, and Three Amigos. And while those... Oh, films, another Dan Aykroyd movie. Huh? Yeah, while those films are kind of um, canonized now, they're kind of like... Spies Like comedies, Us is not right now. Uh, they were major <laughs> flops. So John Landis... Basically doesn't have a career at this point. He killed a bunch of people on set of his film. Went to trial for it. Uh, basically, didn't seem to feel any remorse about it. Because the one quote that always gets passed around is him like, Yeah, I'll never forget that night. I'll never be able to live it down. Which sounds like a good start. But then he follows up with, I don't think my career will ever recover from it. Womp, womp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no one really wants to work with John Landis, but Eddie Murphy had a great time working with him on Trading Places. So he lobbies really hard to get John Landis to be able to direct Coming to America. They they, fucking hates him. They don't get along. <laughs> yeah, they get in a bunch of fights and they hate each other and blah, blah, blah. Huh. Uh, but then I guess they reconcile because John Landis comes back to direct Beverly Hills Cop 3. <laughs> the worst one. I think the second one is the worst one, right? I don't know. I, I haven't seen I haven't seen two or three in, in a long time. Yeah, I think the third one is like more return to form. After that, uh, he makes some other shitty movies I've never seen and directs TV shows. Uh, but he did direct a film called Burke and Hare starring Simon Pegg and Andy Serkis about the two historically famous grave robbers, Burke and Hare. It was actually pretty good. Well, it's got Simon Pegg. Andy Serkis. Yeah. It's yeah. got uh, Gollum slash Caesar... Slash King Kong. King Kong. Andy Serkis. You, you usually hear a lot about Andy Serkis being psyched about like his motion capture performances and stuff and like what it meant for acting and blah, blah, blah. Not so much anymore. I think he's more like, I wish I could have just been a regular actor. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to put words into his mouth, but. He's definitely known more for his uh, he's CG gone. characters yeah, than, he's uh, more yeah. than he's anything. And, Although every time I see him, I like he's really good in whatever he does. <laughs> Yeah, he's a good actor. It was cool to see him in Civil War. No, Black, Black Panther. Panther. He was in uh, Old Age Ultron, too. Yeah, he's cool in Black Panther. I like he's got a mixtape. <laughs> you want to hear it? <laughs> yeah. So that's John Landis. Uh, he These days, he I don't know if he can get a movie made. Yeah, well, I mean, he killed a couple people. Maybe, maybe time to hang up the boots. That's the thing, though. Is it's like hard for Scorsese and stuff to make movies now, so... Who's going to take a chance on that guy? Yeah. Well, he, I mean, you better start, like, writing some really cheap scripts, man. <laughs> it's like De Palma had a new movie that came out this year. And it suffered immensely because of the budget, I believe. I haven't watched it yet, but all the reviews were kind of like, oof. Yeah, there were, like, the money wasn't there for the story. De Palma's made some shit, too, though. So <laughs> <laughs> to Maybe honest. it's just that. You know, uh, I really like De Palma, but... Uh, his, you know, not a masterpiece in my opinion, because I've never even felt the need to watch it unedited or anything like that, but Scarface, right? He's known for Scarface. Because of, like, the late 90s, like, P. Diddy and shit, how they had such reverence for Scarface. Like, I've never gone out of my way to watch Scarface, because I'm like, it's gotta be fucking dumb. Yeah. Fucking P. Diddy. It's okay. It's, yeah, honestly, it's probably what you would expect. Yeah, I mean, we're going to watch it eventually. And <laughs> I've seen it. I just, like, have never sat down and be like, all right, time to really watch Scarface. It's yeah. like I've come in halfway through it at my friend's house, caught it on TV, edited. You know yeah. what I mean? I've just never, like, sat down. Like, let's think about Scarface for a while. 
Honestly, just because of you, did he? <laughs> Like, you motherfucker, you trying to get fucking two, Sean Puffy Combs. Trying to get two pot kills. You think you're Scarface? Little bitch. I'll fight you today, P. Diddy. Yeah, I guess that's enough for the backstory. I talked to everyone knows Eddie Murphy, right? Who? Eddie Murphy. Edward Reagan Murphy. Eddie Murphy. From County Tipperary. Uh the McDowell's restaurant is uh it's actually a Wendy's. Huh. Yeah, they just dressed up a Wendy's. And when they did, apparently, the like, first few days of shooting, there was, like, some dude who came down taking pictures. And, like, in the it was like McDonald's? Yeah, from, like, representing McDonald's. And like, you guys are going to get so sued and blah, blah, blah. Except for they'd already worked out a deal with McDonald's <laughs> Corporation. That fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, I guess it's been a while since I've seen this movie, though, because in my memory, I straight up just thought they got a job at McDonald's. Oh, you don't remember McDowell's? Uh, oh, I do. That oh, all. man. That's my favorite person. I forgot movie. about um, her uh, boyfriend, Lionel Richie. <laughs> I I remember him because it always made it hard to watch ER. Yeah, oh, yeah, because he's the handsome doctor. <laughs> yeah. One of the four handsome doctors in ER. <laughs> that was um, a major like selling point promotional thing for ER in the beginning. Remember? It was like, no, handsome look at how handsome these doctors are. Ooh. It was George Clooney, him, Eric. LaSalle, I think is how he pronounced his name. Yeah. It would be like Lasaya. And uh, what's the other one? No Wiley. No Wiley, yeah. I think that was it. It was those two. And then the guy from Revenge of the Nerds. I don't think he was considered one of the handsome ones, though. No. He's also in Top Gun. Oh, he's Goose. Goose. Yeah, I don't know if he was considered handsome at that point. His hairline was pretty bad. And he had one of those, like, long little faces. (laughs) His His face is long and his little. That reminds me, completely as an aside here, uh, remember when we first moved to Arizona? Nope. Oh. <laughs> I ahead. was thinking about it randomly the other day, and I remember my first like major reactions were like, man, there's a lot of white people here, and man, white people have really big heads. <laughs> and I was like, do I have a really big head? <laughs> yeah, I, I have a big <laughs> head. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> but yeah, just because we weren't used to being around so many white people, I guess. But I just remember I was... It was like culture shock almost. I was like, damn, this is where all the white people stay. <laughs> this is where they've been at. It's been a long time since I've seen a, a Jerry Curl. I wonder if it could ever make a comeback. There was a kid I used to sit next to in first grade at Jerry Curl. Oh, uh, yeah. When I was, yeah. It was like, yeah, it was really coming out of style in like the late, yeah. the early 90s. And so that's like really the last time I remember seeing him. Yeah, I had a friend who had a Jerry Curl for a little bit too. But not by like, it was like kindergarten, first grade, he had Jerry Curl. And then second grade, uh, he had got a haircut. Just to like a regular fade. Yeah. What was his name? Hmm. Joel was the kid I was thinking of. My friend just had a boring name. Like just Jonathan or something. Yep. Anyways, <laughs> growing up in the Bay Area. Remember there's a lot of uh, Soviet refugees. Duh. I guess it would have been, well, they would have come during the Soviet era, but it would have been after the fall of Berlin Wall that we would have really met them. Because that was like 89, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember I had a lot of Russian and Ukrainian friends. Leonardo and uh, Eugenie and um, Sasha. <laughs> Sasha. Yeah, a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of those uh, them, them Slavic types. They were all uh, Jewish, too. I wonder why they left. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this film has a Jewish man in it. Eddie Murphy. Well, Eddie Murphy plays a Jewish Eddie man. Plays a Jewish man. Oh, so Soul Glow. Are you talking about the Jerry Curl, right? Yeah. They got Soul Glow. It's Soul like, Glow. It's like the product for your hair. Afro Sheen? Yeah. <laughs> they definitely satirizing Afro Sheen at the time, right? Because you ever seen that old Afro Sheen commercial where um, it's like Frederick Douglass comes back from the time to like, he's like, boy, you're froze, dry, nappy. You need to get your shit straight. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I don't. And I'm going to YouTube when I go. <laughs> yeah, there's an Afro Sheen commercial of Frederick, Frederick Douglass, Douglass where he comes to like, shape up dude's fro. It's like a, a teenager with a bad fro. And he's, you need some Afro Sheen. It's like, I don't know if Frederick Douglass would come back in time to, to promote this product. Perhaps in poor taste, but maybe I'm not the best person to say that. I, yeah, I mean, who other people can feel how they want to feel about it. I just, Now it's just quaint and what a novelty. Can you imagine, like, advertising something with Frederick Douglass now? <laughs> Trump tried to. 
<laughs> yeah, he acted like as if Frederick Douglass was still alive, didn't he? Isn't that what it was? He yeah. Was in the pres- speaking of him in the present tense. Uh, yeah, but the, I feel like it has to be they're kind of poking fun at Afro Sheen. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. That's Afro what I'm Sheen understanding. Had those, it. like weird over the top commercials like Frederick Douglass coming back in time. Soul Glow. Do you think it's weird that a white dude directed this movie? No, I don't think so. Because I mean, it's Eddie Murphy's movie, right? Yeah, so I was thinking about it while I was watching it. Is he, I mean, you think it's weird that Eddie Murphy plays a white dude? A Jewish dude for a second? Like, if you flip it, if like a, a white comedian plays a black guy. Uh, John Landis uh, specifically worked on Eddie Murphy to do that aspect of the movie as revenge for Jewish comedians doing blackface. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's revenge, and revenge is great. <laughs> a white face is great because of the revenge aspect. I was thinking about this too while I was watching it because, well, yeah, I guess I'll finish the first thought. Like, um, at first I was like, man, it's kind of like, well, Eddie Murphy wanted him. He's friends with him. John Landis, he's established director. Plus, I'm like, I but don't know if this like, movie is necessarily super racist either. Well, you know no. I mean, it's really banal. But I don't think there's like any, a lot of racial commentary necessarily. No, the thought I was having is, though, it's like an all black film written and produced by. Yeah, a black man. director. Yeah, he's I get like, it. He, and that's one thing Spike Lee accused Eddie Murphy of is just not helping other black actors mm-hmm. or yeah. people in the business. And I was like, he probably should have like got a black director. There's a cameo from F. Gary Gray in this movie when they're at the Black Rally. Black Awareness Week. Black sure. Awareness Rally, yeah. yeah. Um, I was like, why didn't he direct it? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, that's what I mean. Is like, oh, so Eddie Murphy just chose an established director, a white man, instead of you know helping someone else out. Then it's also like, well, he did have a personal connection to him, and he said he the most one he ever had was shooting trading places, so that could have been it. So I was like, well, I guess that's not a big deal. And basically, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm tired of 2019 making me think all these thoughts all the time. <laughs> you social justice warriors out there, goddamn it! <laughs> I'm sick of this intersectionality and socialism yeah, or how, something how bullshit. You, you goddamn, we don't need to protect people. All for um, socialism, just for me. <laughs> you goddamn social justice warriors making me aware of. Uh, the the <laughs> class and all these things. God damn it. And then, yeah, that made me also think about how uh, the United States is like a meat grinder culturally. Like, you, it's basically, you come to the United States and you better forget all your shit. You get like a parade once in a while, that's it. You better speak English. Get a regular ass fucking job. Don't talk about the home country. I'm not going to play your shit on the radio. None of that. You get a parade <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> But I was just thinking the the larger context, like how at this point, um, it comes up a lot because people try to use it as like a shitty badge, like talking about their Irish, Polish, Italian heritage. Yeah. But it's like you don't actually practice any of that shit. It's not necessarily your fault because the United States stomped that culture out of existence so you could become this amorphous white American, you know. But it's, so part of it's like... So I'm thinking of it in uh, a way to combat white nationalism. And this is like a really easy thought is like, you're proud to be white. Now you can be proud to be an actual culture. Uh, so I've seen the why the white nationalism problem seems to be so such a big problem in the United States is because of how we've traditionally ground individual cultures out of people. Mm. So people don't have any identity to latch on to. So these... Uh, simple, easy platitudes that white nationalism espouses makes like disenfranchised, disenfranchised white boys feel like that they're, they're doing something. But it's like, what, what even is white? You know what I mean? It's like the. It's, <coughs> it's a shifting uh, definition, Kyle. We, we can look back through history and see that. Well, it's just white is everything that you know those other guys. It's want, uh, it's like know? the yeah. Well, it's, it's like it's it's very traditional waspy shit. Yeah. Well, it's boring though. Ain't got no flavor. Mayonnaise, you say? Yeah, no flavor. That said, though, I don't know what the solution is. It's not like I don't know. They try to keep your culture intact. Everyone should. That's like even our sisters can't speak Spanish because that's the side of their family was like, oh, you can't speak Spanish in America. That sucks, you know what I mean? Like, the loss of culture because of stupid-ass boot heels. I mean, I, I know people that, like, both their parents are, you know, from Mexico, speak Spanish, and the kids do not speak a word. Yeah. I don't know. I was just thinking about that because he's kind of an immigrant in this movie. It's, like, the most, like, pampered, wonderful immigrant experience you could ever think of. Like, oh, no, he has to work a minimum wage job. <laughs> but he's also 
Arsenio Hall can immediately just like, oh, we got a hot tub and shit now. <laughs> right. As soon as there's a mean? problem, it's like, ah, oh, dad's just going to wire us a million dollars. Yeah. So, you know, just thinking about He that. doesn't have any of the real concerns of your actual working class hero. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I was also, I lis- was listening to the Pogues yesterday, just because it's like that season. Always listening to Shane right now. And, uh, you know, they have the song about immigration called Thousands Are Sailing. There's a reference to Mr. Cohen, and people misinterpret it as being Leonard Cohen. And so I was like, I need to get more information about this and learn about, it's like John Abrams Cohen. He was a guy that, like, uh, was a big deal on Broadway, at the, like, in the 1930s or something. So I was trying to get more information about that. And I ended up on songmeetings.net. And I was reading through the comments for the, the lyrics to that song. And this fucking plastic patty piece of trash, like Chud <laughs> Bastard was in there talking about how the song makes him cry because of his ancestors who came here legally, he put in parentheses, <laughs> legally at the time. And I was like, oh, we're in for a ride now. <laughs> and then he proceeded to use his uh, very amorphous Irish heritage in relation to a song about the, how bad immigration can be in the United States and how it didn't really work out for the Irish people and continues to perpetuate today for other people. It's basically a song about immigration for everyone. He was pre- proceeded to use that to cry about some bullshit he didn't experience and use it as a weapon to shit to on the old, uh, modern immigrants. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I don't know what the solution is because, yeah, everyone you see on Twitter with clovers in their screen name and this fucking plastic patty American trash shit is like, you don't speak the language. You don't listen to the music. You don't know anything about modern Ireland. You, you know what I mean? It's all it is is just some like weird, like shitty, like white cop badge bullshit. It's you know? <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I don't know how you get people to embrace their culture. Without it's the dropkick. They only, they drop, listen to the dropkick Murphy's a real, real hearty Irish band. Yeah. Like, can you listen to the IRA songs? <laughs> I, I just listened to Kinky Boots the other day. Yeah, we were, <laughs> when we were writing the other day, we were listening to IRA songs. Yeah, so I was like, well, that fucking sucks, and you do see it everywhere. And sometimes it's like, yeah, I um, like being of Irish descent. I like that uh, culture that we have. And it's fun to see how it um, like, prim- like mutated generationally, so there's still aspects of it, but like in different ways. And then uh, trying to learn the language and, you know, all sorts of shit. And so, yeah, it's cool to be Irish. I like being Irish. But then these fucking losers, man, like, they just ruin it. It's like, I don't want to be Irish. I don't want to be Irish. <laughs> you just got to go back and look at the the actual history of, uh, of the yeah. Irish and feel better about it. Well, the thing is, like, I don't want to. This is going to be some real SJW libtard shit. But um, That's okay. We've already been on that trip. Yeah, I'm trying to, like move away from white identity, which is, I've never, like, conceived myself as white. That's, like, not an identifier to me, but that also just showcases my privilege to a certain extent. But trying to, like, contextualize it to myself and find, like, a performative way to do it so that it's easily digestible and understandable, understandable to other people where white identity is meaningless. Because I feel like if you can get... A lot of these stupid shitty Americans to forget being white. Then it's like, all right, well now we can finally maybe move forward in class solidarity. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, but like it's like you just got to get the I don't know you got to get the right like soundbite that you can get or like the right tweet you know <laughs> just, just get people just get the idea in people's heads you know you just got to slowly like drip feed new ideas because everyone's so regimented in what yeah. they already believe and so you just got to chip away at it. And it's like, you just forget about being white. It doesn't mean anything. I recognize the privilege, of course, but moving away from the idea of white being good or anything of value or any kind of identity. I, I mean, just move away from the idea that that white actually means anything. Yeah. But then, oh, my Irish ancestors came here legally and they okay. helped build the country and the railroads and fought in the Civil War. And, and then invaded Canada. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But they weren't like these jerks who won't even learn the language. Well, <laughs> There's a lot of people in uh, New York that did not learn the language. I'll just fucking tell you that. Well, not only that is uh, the Irish had a kind of upper hand on the language thing because England made them learn English. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think they were super psyched about not being able to speak their own language yeah. anymore. No, they were kind of pissed about it. And they would have probably known English when they came to America. Except for some of the people in like the West. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's a weird, crazy tangent. But it was all the stuff this movie made me think about. It's like things that were going on during the week, but coalescing while watching the movie. And uh, that's why movies are fucking cool. <laughs> Do you this, know some people think that O.J. Simpson was in this movie? Is he not? He's not. No. Oh. <laughs> why not? They think uh, that John uh, Amish is... Uh, O.J. Simpson is uh, O.J. Simpson. I'm terrible with names. I mean, he doesn't look anything like the juice. And I don't know. Like a famous actor. <laughs> People are dumb. I can't believe they're making another one. Yeah, it seems so weird. It is being written by uh, Eddie Murphy and the guy that wrote the original one, uh, Sheffield. Is Arsenio Hall going to be in it? Semi? I don't know. What does Arsenio Hall do these days? I haven't seen him in a long time. Also, I remember back in the day when... The thing I always remember is the Saturday Night Live skit where uh, they have, um, fuck, I can't remember his name. Uh, The Tonight Show host. um, James Corbin. No, James Cordron. Who's that fat Englishman that England didn't want? Oh, yeah, James Corden. Cordron. Cordron. But that's not Tonight Show. Yeah, that's That's not what you're talking about. I was going to just bring him up, like, because, haha, he's a fucking loser. But then I couldn't remember his name. (laughs) He's a a fucking loser. (laughs) <laughs> Why can't I remember the fucking dude's name? He's like the most famous talk show host of all time. Johnny Carson. Uh, hey, John, Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. So that's that's a thing I always remember from that, that time period is the assessing old thing where they have Johnny Carson like trying to compete with Arsenio Hall. He's like, oh, I've got my finger elongated. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, watching clips of Arsenio this week because I was just, you know, seeing if I could find anything funny to that maybe get added into this episode. <laughs> His, man, he had the fucking dopest fades. Like, he had some really good fades. I was like, wow. He had the perfect face for it. Man, Arsenio Hall. <laughs> it was a nice fade. Uh, there was also a video where I was like, Arsenio Hall goes off on the queer nation. And I was like, I'm not going to watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not kind of, it's not the energy I want around Arsenio Hall. I don't have any context for what it is about. Sure, and I don't want to. I'm sure he said some stupid shit. He yeah. was really hot, hot for like ten minutes. It was crazy to see like all the people in the audience. Like, oh yeah, we all know the fist pump. And Remember Bill Clinton played saxophone? Yeah, that is like, oh, he's gonna be the first black president. <laughs> Racism. <laughs> America's so strange. Do you notice the homeless men that Eddie Murphy accused? Yeah, the trading places. Yeah, that's yeah. the Duke brothers from Trading Places. And uh, did you know that King Queen James Earl Jones and uh, Madge Sinclair? They're uh, Mufasa and Sarabi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're the king, queen, and lion king. <laughs> nice. You think they did that on purpose? I would like to think so. Yeah. yeah Arsenio Hall uh, is semi. He's also uh, Clarence. He's uh, the, the... One of the barbershop One dudes. of the barbershop guys. He's also the... He's the Reverend, Reverend Brown. He disappears in the Reverend Brown one. Like, I can't tell that one. Arsenio yeah. at all. <laughs> Oh, he's also the ugly woman, too, that comes Oh, in. yeah. That one's clearly just him in drag. Yeah. And I also like, you can tell that Eddie Murphy's trying hard not to laugh right at the end of the scene. <laughs> oh, shit. And that whole series of montages where they're interviewing girls. Uh, one of the last girls they're talking to, she's like, talking about being, oh, I'm going to be an actor and a musician and blah, blah, blah. She has, like, fucking the nicest voice I've ever heard. I was like, wow, what, her voice is amazing. <laughs> That's what does it for me. Date watch up, they did. Nice voice. <laughs> Random lady from Coming to America, who's probably quite a bit older than me at this point. Maybe dead. Go on a date <laughs> with me. Um, no, there's tons of beautiful people in this movie. I was like, wow, this is just like Black Panther. Psh, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Coming to America. Yeah, the uh, set design for the palace and then all the costuming for um, Zamunda is really cool. I mean, I like, like uh, I like the king's body servant just breaking out in a song randomly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the fucking dance when uh, his betrothed is being introduced. I mean, it goes on for a little bit too long, but that dance is wild. <laughs> uh, choreographed by Paula Abdul. Oh, yeah, super. she was making a killing back then. Yeah. She was choreographing everything. Straight up now, tell me, are you gonna love me forever? Love me forever. Oh oh oh. oh. And then that, them's the hits. 
No, plus the one with the rapping cat. That sounds like Will Smith. Oh, MC Scat Cat? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> MC Scat Cat. Whatever happened to that? Opposites dude? attract. Whatever happened to that dynamo? I'm sure there's a YouTube video about his decline. <laughs> if they're not, we got we got a full one <laughs> behind the music. MC, MC Scat, Scat Cat. Cat. Uh, no, no. You know, I just couldn't take it. Is that how he sounded? I don't know. That's how I would voice him. I remember he rapped just like Will Smith. Yeah, like that's really. how I, I mean to me. That's how he sounded. Fresh that's Prince. how everyone kind of sounded in the early '90s, except for like Wu Tang. <laughs> It was ba 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 da ba 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 da ba ba da ba ba da. My name is MC Scat Cat, and I'm here to say, dig fruity pebbles in a major way. Skip that boo. <laughs> That's kind of how it was for a while, and then luckily, like NWA saved the day. That's right. I don't care that hip hop started in New York. You guys were goofy. <laughs> hip hop started in. The You've made this claim several times. You're gonna get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to reignite the West Coast East Coast. <laughs> Hip hop war, but I'm extending it to like everything now too, like West Coast, East Coast film, West Coast, East Coast, all other genres of music. I mean, the West Coast Chinese food is definitely better. Yeah, <laughs> and Mexican food. <laughs> oh God, yes. And New York is so far away from Mexico. Every genre of music I can think of, all the good bands came from the Bay Area, or L.A. The Ramones. The, yeah, but um, the Dead Candies are better, <laughs> and Black Flag. I'm trying to think of a comparable band like the Ramones that's better than the Ramones, but they're all from England. So. <laughs> <laughs> like the Clash, the Dams. Yeah, like yeah. from the same time period? I can't yeah. either. But yeah, there's, I can't think of anything from the West Coast. <laughs> Sorry. So maybe you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been a great way to segue into my hot take about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood action. <laughs> Damn it. Damn. Uh, remember when uh, they're like, oh, where should we go? Oh, the United States, it's so big. Should we go to New York or LA? Yeah. <laughs> That's how most people think. Yeah, I mean, those are like two of the two like big beacons of the United States, right? <laughs> also, Branson, Missouri. Let's go to Hannibal, Missouri. That's where Mark Twain's from. Oh. Let's check it out. We'll go look at the Missouri. Samuel Clemens. We'll look at the Mrs. The Mighty Mississippi. No, I think you mean the Mighty Mississippi. Mississippi. The Mighty Mississippi. And the Ohio River doesn't go around along there too or something? Or yeah, I think down? so. I don't know if it goes down. down. No, yeah, I think it does go through Missouri. I don't know shit about the United States geography now that I think about it. I know enough, but not enough about bodies of water. Yeah. Um, let's see. You got the, the Bay, San Francisco Bay, and the list. You got Monterey Bay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. That's true. <laughs> That's what you, you got those two things. Everywhere else is desert, I think. You got uh, Grizzly Bay, too. I haven't like seen very much of the United States making fun of the movie about L.A. and New York. I haven't even been to the East Coast. I haven't uh, really left the West Coast, to be <laughs> honest. All right, we're taking a podcast on the road. Uh, I'm going to sell my house. We're going to buy an RV. We're going to be in your town. I was, Next week, we. I was thinking like we are gonna have to like take an RV or something if we ever do go on tour because I don't like flying very much and I also like don't like not being at home. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. with the RV, you take the home with you. Yeah, it's a safe space. A little apartment on wheels. A little safe space. Yeah, because I gotta like have my shit around me. Gotta be able to crawl back to the cave. Crawl, crawl back, back to, to the, the cave. cave. I've been listening to Man Man recently. Obviously, only the first three albums. Of course. The first three out of five? I think six now. Oh, man. I haven't listened really listened to him since uh, Rabbit Habits. Yeah. But uh, Six Demon Bag is the best. Uh, I go between Six Demon Bag and Rabbit Habits. Oh, really? Yeah. I still There's a lot of songs I like on The Man with the Blue Turban. Yeah, I actually think Rabbit Habits is the, the worst one. worst of those yeah. three, yeah. Man in the... I, I just like that there's a song called Queequay's Playground. Yeah, Harpoon, <laughs> Harpoon <laughs> Fever. <laughs> uh, the only song I really still like on Rabbit Habits is, uh, well, Top Drawers, that, that's still a yeah, That banks. Uh, but um, what is the Poor Jackie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And also, like, anytime I feel like listening to Mad Men now, I'll be like, but I can just listen to Tom Waits. <laughs> Oh, update from last week. Still feeling pretty emotional and uh, lonely and stuff, but that's kind of the way it is in the winter time for me. But I've been listening to um, Bright Eyes, Shane McGowan, and Tom Waits, so I think my mood's definitely going to be 
cheerful going forward if I continue to listen to these guys. Real when pig, it, real pick me up. When the when the cheeriest person you're listening to is Shane McGowan, I think there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some happy songs. <laughs> when summer evening drunk to hell, I sat there <laughs> nearly lifeless. I like the um that song because there's been lots of summer evenings where I was drunk to hell, sat there nearly lifeless. <laughs> Coming to America is really funny. It uh, held up. Like, uh, it's I've shot very, very well. I, I know it's just like a regular ass comedy, but it's immaculately shot. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. It is well shot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Eddie Murphy is great. He does have tons of energy on, on screen. It's just like, man, I forgot th- this last month seeing My Name is Dolomite and then watching Coming to America. And it's like, fuck, Eddie Murphy was just, he had so much charisma. He like he's like, he, I believe he's still the only member of the Silent Laugh cast to host while he was a cast member. Correct. <laughs> he also is like one of the highest grossing film stars of all time, like top five. And on Coming to America, he made sure that Charlie Murphy got paid $1,000 a week as his stand-in. And that's what you do for family. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Murphy! Um, my name is Dolmite. It was dedicated to Charlie Murphy, huh? Oh, yeah, it was. Makes sense. Charlie Murphy's kind of like a Rudy Ray Moore type character. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he was a little bit of like a gangbanger, right? He's just like a little bit harder than Eddie, which I would make sense as like the older brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, older brother tends to be the older brother does like the hard work, and the younger brother gets to like kind of like all right, cool, I'll just ride in the wake. <laughs> From my experience, <laughs> <laughs> he's man. So why don't you fucking make a hundred million dollar movie and pay me a thousand dollars a week for your standard? I'm not as funny as Eddie Murphy. Oh, I'm willing to admit that. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was reading he um, kind of purposely lost his laugh. Oh, really? Yeah. So it wouldn't be a trademark anymore? Fuck that. That's cool. That's a cool laugh. <laughs> well, he, so he's like, yeah, that was my natural laugh. And then people started. like I Then I would like get to the point where I'd laugh just because I knew it was going to make other people laugh. And people would come up to me mimicking a laugh or demanding me to do a laugh. And oh, well, yeah, but people are going to demand you to do shit anyways. It's yeah. part of, it's I don't know, unfortunate you, part of being It sounded famous. like it was kind of a natural thing where he just kind of was like, away fuck from it. it. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, your laugh can change over time for sure. Uh, I hope his new laugh is like uh, Shane McGowan's laugh. You ever heard Shane McGowan laugh? I don't know if I have. <laughs> 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 is that still his laugh even though he has teeth now? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's uh, uh, wheelchair bound. Oh, is he? I don't know. I yeah, don't pay attention. He like, broke right? his pelvis a couple years ago and it like, never healed right. His drinking and stuff. He was more together than ever. He's just looking real old. Cause I guess that's what happens when you're 60 years old and you've been drinking for 55 years. <laughs> <laughs> like he, for, for real, I think he, there's a documentary about him where he says that he, the first time he got drunk, he was only like 9 or 10. Oh, my God. Yeah. Different times, man. Shane McGowan is great. Probably gonna talk about him more. Cause you've been listening to uh, the Pope. Yeah, I just yeah. Well, I'm Shane McGowan's work in general. Yeah. Well, Shane McGowan and the Popes. Uh, Shane McGowan on Sinead O'Connor songs. Shane McGowan singing "It's a Wonderful uh, uh, World" with Nick Cave. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I didn't do uh, Eddie Murphy's voice as so much as I thought I was going to. I was just blown away by Eddie Murphy, honestly. This, this I remember man, really God. liking carrying out, coming to America and trading places yeah. as a kid. Well, no, I, yeah, you know, like I really liked Eddie Murphy when I was a kid. And I was like, oh, yeah, I fucking forgot he was like the shit because it's been so long. Been so long since you've seen him like trying. And it's like, wow, Eddie Murphy was fucking great. Imagine if he would have actually been in Ghostbusters. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know Arsenio Hall did the voice of Winston in the real Ghostbusters cartoon? <laughs> did he really? Isn't that interesting? Since. For those that know, Winston was written for Eddie Murphy. It was a completely different role, though, for Eddie Murphy yeah. than what it ended up being. It would have been more... He would have been more the focus like Bill Murray was rather than Bill Murray. That would have been a, such an interesting movie. I want to go to the alternate universe where he was in Ghostbusters. And Bill Murray was still in it, too. Yeah. To see them fight for screen time. Oh, my God. Yeah. They, Bill Murray would have been chewing those scenes. He already was. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it'll never be. Unless he's... Unless... New Ghostbusters 3. <laughs> Harold Ramis has passed on. He can be replaced by Eddie Murphy. Also, god damn, I know Eddie Murphy is like a little bit younger than those guys, but he's aging so much better than the other Ghostbusters. Eh. 
I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, well, he is like 10 years younger. I mean, Dan Aykroyd has looked rough for like 20 fucking years at this point. I actually saw him recently, and he didn't look that bad aside from being overweight, which he's been for a long time now. Longer than that. He's been kind of overweight for a while. But like, Harold Ramis didn't make it very long. Bill Murray looks like an old man. Old, old man. I mean, Murphy kind of still looks the same. What about Ernie Hudson? I don't know. I haven't seen Ernie in a while. I don't know. I don't think I want to see another Ghostbusters movie. I mean, I probably will see it because the kids like it. But... I'll end up seeing it for sure. But who's asking for it? Not me. I feel like nobody anymore. No. And coming to, to number two America, I don't know about that either. I kind of just wish Eddie Murphy would do a new movie, original movie. He did. My name is Nolman. Yeah, but another one. Oh. And also, it's not quite a rich. It's more like a biopic. Biopic. Yeah. But, like I said, if they do coming number two America, he'll probably barely be in it. It'll be like his son, Michael B. Jordan, has got to find his <laughs> What's Michael B. Jordan's uh, comedy chops like? I don't know. He, I don't know. If I, don't think I've, I don't know if I've ever seen him crack a joke. He's really charismatic. So, I mean, he's probably same, okay. That's not the same thing as being funny, really, though. That's uh, how we all kind of got tricked by Chris Pratt. Ah. <laughs> uh, Lordy, all right, let's VHS cult. What are we watching next week? Uh, let me check. Because <laughs> you know what it is, is you can't. You can. You oh just, shit! What? It's gonna be December next week. You know what we're watching? A Christmas movie? Kind of. We're watching Lethal Weapon. Oh man! Yeah, you were just talking about. I was Murray. Riggs and Murta. Because I was talking about my dream donut trailer. <laughs> I had to live in a trailer. That's how trash I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when the debate was on. We were texting each other about it a little bit, but I stopped watching. It. I think yeah, you me did too. too. But uh, he's like, "Yeah, Yang Bucks would be all right." And I was, I was like, "Yeah, I could live off a thousand dollars because I'm a dirt person. <laughs> 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 Easily live off a thousand dollars a month, no problem." I, there's plenty of times in my life where I was making way less a month than that. <laughs> getting by somehow. It wasn't very nice though. Hey, I don't know. I don't need. I don't need much. Don't need much. Just uh, some good friends at a barber shop. His mama called him Clay. I'm gonna call him Clay. Call him Clay. There's a lot of uh, lines in this movie that you've quoted your entire life. Yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one, and then uh, yeah, right. The, washing the lettuce, but then. Working the fry. <laughs> then assistant manager. That's when the big bucks start rolling in. Making the big bucks. Yeah, that's a good one. Man, this movie's fucking good. I know we didn't talk about it very much, but you're not here to hear us talk about movies that you can watch and experience yourself. You're here to talk, hear us talk about political feelings and movies. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the movie a lot. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, no. we'll see how it goes. Whatever, you'll figure out more edit. I don't yeah, pay attention to this shit. It's someone else's problem. His VHS, Join the cult. VHS cult. Join up. AdventureProductions.com Follow us on Twitter Follow us on Instagram Review the podcast Do something Because if I get attacked by a dog I'll probably just die Because I don't have any money or insurance (laughs) (laughs) Man that's (laughs) Living in America America. Awesome VHS cult